Hello, beloved family, Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. Uh, first of all, let me just say what a tremendous honor this is to be here with you all today uh, to bring you a word and to begin with a word of congratulations on 40 years, 40 years of transformational light and teaching of power and truth, of love and oneness. What an honor. I am the Reverend Dr. David Alexander. I am the current chair of the Leadership Council for Centers for Spiritual Living and spiritual director at Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta. I bring you greetings on behalf of our entire leadership uh, body, our spiritual leader, Reverend Dr. Edward Vilhune, our field leader, Reverend Sunday Cote, our executive director, Reverend Sonia Burns, myself and the entire leadership council and really all of us, all of our practitioners, our ministers, our entire field wants to reach out to you and say congratulations on 40 magnificent years of ministry. What an honor and what a thrill. I'm coming to you today from my home office where for much of the pandemic, uh, I have been broadcasting my Sunday services um, uh, here in my home library. And you can see that I am actually surrounded by over 40 years of legacy and history, uh, mementos and books and things on the wall, in particular uh, here over my right shoulder, uh, the doctoral robe uh, that belonged to my childhood minister in this movement, Reverend Dr. Bob Henderson, who was a minister of religious science from 1974 uh, to 2018 when he made his transition. His widow sent me his robe, um, his doctoral hood, his, his master's hood, which you may also see uh, behind me. There it is, <laughs> right there. Um, and a number of other wonderful uh, things from his uh, collection of books and, and whatnot. I'm surrounded by other mementos of mentors and teachers of years past. I myself have been in this teaching over 40 years. And so I wanted to point that out to, to bring into uh, this special occasion today that I know what that 40 years means. I know what that lifetime of legacy means. Uh, I know what it means to plant seeds and watch them grow and to have them turn into something that no one could have expected. I'm sure that my childhood minister, Dr. Bob Henderson, did not anticipate that I would become a minister, a, a colleague of his, and a contributor to this organization in the way that I have been humbled and blessed uh, to do uh, over many years now. Uh, but that was a seed that he planted in the tending and the caring of his ministry for over 40 years. So I acknowledge your accomplishments and acknowledge those seeds that have been planted that will grow into things that you yet cannot see or even comprehend in this moment. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. It is such an honor to be with you today um, as we are reminded of our calling in this holy work, our calling, our great uh, joy and privilege to uh, dance with our ever-changing relationship with the changeless. Right? Let me say that again. It's our great joy and great privilege in this movement to, to dance with our ever-changing relationship with the changeless. Our relationship to it is always changing, but it is always the same. It is the divine. It is the eternal spirit. It is the everlasting power and presence of wholeness, of God, of peace, of well-being that exists in the universe. And ours is to build a ladder, a bridge of awareness and understanding between our own personal experience and that of the divine itself. And that relationship changes and shifts and flexes and moves and ebbs and flows with the tides and the seasons of our lives, the life of our ministry, so on and so forth. Our founder reminded us that uh, we should not stay in any one place for too long. Dr. Ernest Holmes said, if we were to stay in any one place too long, it would be disastrous because we would become too rigid, too inflexible. 
but I propose to you today that what he had to say here about this was not about where we physically reside in any one moment or for how long, though certainly moving houses or jobs or uh, across the country as I recently did after 15 years of ministry in the Pacific Northwest to take this position I now have in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, certainly those sorts of changes in our life can bring blessings and bring new insights and awarenesses. But I believe when Ernest Holmes said that we shouldn't stay in one place too long, what he was speaking about was our mindset. Right? Where do we come from in consciousness? That we shouldn't stay stuck in any one idea for too long. So as we celebrate 40 years of the Temple of Light in Jamaica, we, we celebrate that you have evolved, you have grown, you have changed and transformed and will continue to do so as you gather together to, to build excitement about your new strategic plan and your new vision for the future. It is good and is honorable and it is just that you not stay the same, that you grow and change and evolve. We are called to shift and change and evolve constantly our relationship with the eternal divine. And in that changing to move ever closer to this idea of wholeness, to our relationship and our understanding of what wholeness is. The Science of Mind is a powerful teaching that reminds us of the power and personal responsibility, the personal responsibility that we have to awaken ourselves to our greater good, to be emancipated from discord of every nature, as Dr. Holmes would say in the Declaration of Principles, to shake off the coils of not enoughness, of limited thinking, of lack and limitation, of every kind, so that we might awaken to the pure potentiality of our souls, Temple of Light stands as that tall beacon. It stands as that wonderful beam of light and of consciousness in the world so that all who are on that journey of personal awakening may find you and come into the sense of personal responsibility that they have to discover who and what they truly are in the eyes of the divine. But it's not just that we are called to do this work as individuals on a path of awakening, right? It's not just that spirit is always calling us forward into our transformation. It's not just that spirit is uh, calling our soul to expand into its wholeness and its fullness. All of that is happening. But it is that we require community while we're doing it, right? One of the great blessings and lessons of this pandemic has been that we have discovered that if it, we were just to do it alone, we would be the only ones here, right? But it turns out we need each other. Community is more important now than ever before. We need each other to grow, right? We're not an island unto ourself. We are connected by an infinite, vast sea of infinite possibility and of the energy of the divine that connects between your shore and mine, your heart and mine. And that in fact, how we act, how we be, how we evolve in our own beingness actually contributes to the evolution of others around us. So what a beautiful thing it is to gather in community and remember just how intimate this connection to the divine is, just how close we really are as we come out of a year of being physically separated, that the pandemic taught us, if we did not already know it, that we do in fact breathe the same air. Right? And that air connects us just as that spirit connects us. You are not alone. You are not alone. If you are hearing this message, if you are new to this spiritual community or you've been here since the beginning and you're celebrating the 40th, the message that beams out of this great temple of light is simply that you are not alone. First and foremost, you are one with a higher power and principle called wholeness and that wholeness is always calling you home. It's always seeking you to reside in you. And so we stand here together to stand on the powerful legacy of the ancestors and those that have gone before to make this way, 
to fashion with their own toil and effort and sweat the very place that you stand. Your founder, the Reverend Dr. Elma Lunsom, who with a small band of visionaries and pioneers founded this great space that you celebrate today, this temple of light, this beacon of hope and renewal and rejuvenation and oneness and connection to the divine. To Dr. Elma, we say your name. We say your name. We lift you and we honor you for the work that you have done that has led to this place. What a blessing in the eternal realm you are. And the gift that you gave to the world was so lovingly and carefully handed and placed into the hands of our beloved Reverend John Scott. My goodness, my goodness, what a beautiful uh, uh, tending and nurturing by his melodic voice that has soothed the weary hearts of spiritual travelers, sojourners looking for a place to call home, a place where they belong, a place that affirms their dignity and their worth as human beings, as valuable children of God. And what a treasured voice of our movement to remind you as such. Oh, I could listen to him read the phone book and I would feel better about myself. <laughs> is it not true? Yes, yes, I believe it is. And so we stand on the crossroads of your history and your destiny. You in this moment stand on the crossroads of your history and your destiny of honoring the past and looking forward into the future. What will the next 40 years bring? The great American author and and uh, visionary uh, voice of James Baldwin. His words come to us for just a time as this. As we emerge from this pandemic, he reminds us, all is not lost, he says. Responsibility cannot be lost. It can only be abdicated. When one rejects abdication, one begins again one begins again. When we reject the abdication of our responsibility and we step into the fullness of our being, we begin again and we begin on a journey that reminds us of who and what we really are. But we don't do that in isolation. We do it in community. And so I say that this, the Temple of Light of Jamaica begins again in this moment as it rejects abdication of its responsibility to its future, to its children, to those who call this a spiritual home, and to those who are yet to discover this place, but who may just discover it this weekend, during this celebration, or the next Sunday service, or next week, or after a year from now when you've accomplished some of the wonderful things that are laid out in your strategic plan as your volunteers and your community members come together to breathe new life into what is before you. Oh, I want you to think about every new person that discovers you online or in, in person that you have an opportunity to dedicate yourself in this moment to that individual who comes in like you and breathes a sigh of relief and says, I, have no, I had no idea that there was a place like this. I had no idea. I've always thought this way, but I never knew there was a community of people who believed like I believe, who think like I think, who feel what I feel about the nature of God and the divine and of the universe and that we are all connected, how good it is to come home to this place. Everything you do between now and that moment helps create that moment. Every cup of coffee that gets served, every child that gets uh, served, every uh, elder that gets honored and respected, every service that unfolds with beautiful music and prayer, it all contributes to the awakening and to the journey of someone whose name you do not yet know, but who will be touched and transformed by the ministry that you all have been called to dedicate yourselves to. And so this is the intersection of the true potentiality of community. It is the intersection between our wholeness and our belonging. Where wholeness is an individual journey into our relationship with the divine, belonging is our relationship to each other. It's our connection to each other. 
wholeness is a journey of personal freedom and liberation from circumstances and conditions and limited thinking and belonging is a collective freedom a community freedom free of systemic corporal acts that stand in the way of our personal experience of the divine where wholeness is about our relationship with self belonging is about our relationship with each other And so I honor and respect all that has gone before to create this moment. And I bless, bless with a full heart and with the full power of of the executive team and the ecclesiastical body of Centers for Spiritual Living on behalf of Reverend Dr. Edward Vilhune, our spiritual leader and our field leader, Reverend Sunday, and all of the ecclesiastical representatives of our organization that we say we see you, Temple of Light. We bless you, Temple of Light. We honor you, Temple of Light, Reverend John Scott, and all that contribute to make this place a reality for the past 40 years and for the legacy that you are now opening yourselves up to, for the transformation that is to come. I want to share with you one last thing. That is a poem by Ernest Holmes called The Call. I call it the lost poem of Ernest Holmes because... It is only printed in the 1926 edition of our text, and it is sandwiched between uh, the glossary and the index. Kind of a strange place for a poem, I think. And I don't know why it got put in that particular place, but I do know that when they re-edited and reformatted our textbook in 1938, it didn't reappear. I have an imagination that somehow in the shuffling of the pages, in in the room between Ernest Holmes and his secretary, it just got lost. But it is there in the 1926 edition, and we can see it. And it's a beautiful poem called The Call, and I want to dedicate it to you. I want to dedicate it to every volunteer, to every practitioner, to every student, to every child, to every elder, to every member of the Temple of Light. The 40 years past and the 40 years to come. This is your call. The Call by Ernest Holmes. This I saw, or else some greater presence made it known to me. The universe is filled with life, the earth, the sky, the sea, teemed with intelligence, with majesty and might, deep within me some inner subtle sight, beholds and sees, comprehends and knows the all. No fears, nor falters, but answers the divine call. To be as one beyond the bounds of time and space, to overcome the bondage of the human race, and to leap with trust, undaunted and free, into the deeps of that infinite sea, whose waters, calm, are ready to receive those who in simple faith believe. My beloveds, you have been called for this moment to celebrate, to honor, to uplift, and to prepare for what is to come. God bless you. God bless Centers for Spiritual Living. God bless the wonderful leadership of Reverend John Scott. We love you. We honor you. We thank God for you. Have a wonderful and magnificent 40th anniversary, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace and blessings.